Here's an anti-pattern that I see a lot when I'm auditing React Redux applications. It's where useEffect is used in combination with a Redux store as part of the store process. So the useEffect is listening for changes in the store and then dispatching actions to update the store with new information. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, the problem is twofold. One, you've got your business logic in two different places. You got half your business logic in the store, and then you got your other half of the business logic in the use effect. The other problem is what happens when the use effect doesn't run? The component isn't mounted. You've lost half of your business logic. In addition, use effects themselves run asynchronously, which means that you have some delay in the processing of that event. So I'm going to show you how to do this the right way using Redux listeners. They're built into the Redux toolkit. They have been for a while, and they are the right way to listen to changes in your Redux store. All right, this is the application we're going to play with. It's a very simple Pokemon search application. I can type in my search request here, and you can see it filtering down the list. Now let's go over and take a look at our example app. So our example app is actually a monorepo. There are two different applications. There is the Pokemon application that we were taking a look at this there. It is a Vite application. And then there's the Pokemon BFF or backend from front end. You can run those at the top of the app by doing PMPM dev. This turbo repo has the new experimental UI enabled so you can actually see both those applications running simultaneously. That's really cool. But it's not why we're here. So let's take a look at our store first. This is our Redux store. It is a very standard React store. In the slice for the Pokemon state, you've got the search term as well as the return Pokemon. The initial state starts off with an empty search as well as an empty list of Pokemon. We have the slice that handles the events of updating the search as well as resetting the search as well as the Pokemon getting updated. When I talked to Mark Erickson about this particular workflow, he was adamant that we should think about everything when it comes to Redux in terms of sending events to the store. So that's why we have search updated as well as Pokemon updated. Then we export those actions, we configure the store, and we get our dispatchers and our selectors. Pretty simple. So let's go take a look over at our index page and our route. So we're using Tansac Router for this application. We create a file route for this particular route, and then we give it the component, which in this case is index. Index couldn't be simpler. We're just using the selectors that we got from our Redux store. And then in the use effect, we're looking to see when search input value changes, and then dispatching a Pokemon updated with a new request that's Pokemon search to go fetch that data. Now, of course, we could just be using RTK query for this. That would be the right way to go. But I wanted to have this as a demonstration of the kind of anti-pattern that I see over and over again in these applications. And that's using use effect as half of the business logic. So how can we get around this? Well, first off, we get rid of use effect altogether. Now that greatly simplifies the code, obviously, but it no longer works. Right? We make a change and nothing happens. So what are we gonna do instead? Well, we're gonna create listener middleware. This middleware allows you to register listeners with your store and then listen for changes in the store, which is really awesome. It's basically what we're doing here with a use effect, but we're actually going to move that logic back into the store, which is where we want it to be. So let's go back over to our store and we'll create our listener middleware. To do that right at the top, we'll bring in create listener middleware, right above where we configure the store. We will create that listener middleware, and then we will register it in the configure store. We'll get the default middleware, and then we'll prepend, meaning we'll put it before any of the other middleware that's in there. Now let's go and create a listener. To do that, I'm going to say that I'm starting listening, and I'm going to use it with types. So I'm going to get some type safety in here. Now there are a couple of different ways to specify when you want this listener to get triggered and to fire the effect. One is this predicate, like I've shown here. Predicate allows you to take a look at the old store versus the new store and say, OK, I'm going to compare those two things. And when I return true, that means I want you to trigger the effect. In this case, I'm going to take a look at the search term, compare the two search terms, and see when the search term has changed, I want you to fire the effect. There are several other ways to trigger. You can trigger on the action, the action creator, or a matcher. So let's go and now do our effect. So now when things have changed, I'm going to call Pokemon Search with the new search term, and then I'm going to dispatch the updated Pokemon. I'm bringing in Pokemon Search, hit Save, and now let's give it a try. Now, I'm not getting the initial search, which is something we'll deal with in a second, but there you go. How cool is that? So that's actually using that listener middleware. The predicate fires whenever that search term changes, and then in the effect, we're actually going and running the code. 
So let's handle the not having any list first. To fix that, I'm going to add a before load event on my file route. So before the route loads, I'm going to go and do my own Pokemon search and update the store. All right, that looks good. Let's hit refresh, and now I do get the full list on the initial load. Now, there are other options to do this as well. Over in the store, I could send an initial event down at the end here to kind of trigger the store action if I wanted to keep everything in the store. One thing I think would be really nice would be to add to that listener middleware an ability to get fired on that first go, kind of like a use effect gets fired on the first page load. It would be nice to have this automatically get run. The issue here is that there's no action for it to actually see a change of the store on. So that's why we're not actually getting that initial load and going through this listener middleware the first time. Now, one more thing we can fix is we can put a little debounce in here. Like we can just click on it and we can see that it's making a request every single time. Let's put a 500 millisecond debounce in it. To do that, again, so we go back into my listener, cancel any active listeners, and then give ourselves a delay of 500 milliseconds, and this will debounce. There you go. 500 millisecond debounce. Now we've wrapped our logic back into the store. What that allows us to do is actually have a complete store test. So let's go build that. So create a new test. We'll create an asynchronous test that sets Pikachu and then waits for that debounce to resolve and then checks to see that the state of the store has Pikachu and has some Pokemon in it. So let's go and try this. So while that is running, I'm going to go create another terminal. I'm going to go into our apps Pokemon, which is where our app is. And then in here, I'm going to do the test. And there we go. One test and one test passed. This is not something you could have done before because in the old setup, we had the store and the requesting logic in two different places, and you would have had to test that use effect in order to fully test the entire system. Now everything is in the store. Well, I hope learning about this listener middleware excites you about making some changes to your Redux store to make it more reactive. If you have any more questions or comments about this, be sure to put those in the comment section right down below. I'm not a Redux expert, but I will do my best to answer you there. In the meantime, of course, I do have a course that I'm working on is Pro Next.js. Go check that out at pronextjs.dev. If you sign up for the newsletter, you'll get access to two free courses, one on state management that includes... Redux on the app writer and another one on forms management. In the meantime, of course, if you like this video, click on that like button. If you really like the video, click on the subscribe button and ring that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.